morning ladies. So today I'm going to finish the reading for you. I would like to read it out loud myself so then you can hear how pronunciation should be. And as always, if there are words that you don't understand, I need you to look them up in the dictionary. All right, so page 302. Humbug, not a very substantial meal. Maybe we can suggest something a little more filling? Milo, well, in that case, I think we ought to have a square meal. Azab, claps his hands, a square meal it is. Waiters serve trays of colored squares of all sizes. People serve themselves. Spelling bee, these are awful. Humbug coughs all over the guests, do not care for the food. Azaz claps his hands and the trays are removed. Time for speeches. To Milo, you're first. Milo, hesitantly, your majesty, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to say that, Azaz, that's quite enough, mustn't talk all day. Milo, but I just started. Azaz, next. Humbug, quickly, roast turkey, mashed potatoes, vanilla ice cream. Spelling bee, hamburgers, corn on the cob, chocolate pudding, P-U-D-D-I-N-G. Each guest names two dishes and a dessert. Azaz, the last. Pâté de foie gras, soup de à la Ojean, salad and dives, fromage et fruits et dematas. He claps his hands and waiters serve each guest his words. Dig in, tomorrow. Though I can't say I think much of your choice. Milo, I don't know. I didn't know I was going to have to eat my words. Azaz, of course, of course. Everybody here does. Your speech should have been in better taste. Number one, here, try some somersault. It improves the flavor. Two, have a rigmarole. Offers the bread basket. Three, or a ragamuffin. Four, perhaps you'd care for a synonym bun? Five, why not wait for your just desserts? Azaz, oh yes, the dessert. We're having a special treat today. Freshly made at the half bakery. The half bakery? Of course the half bakery. Where do you think half baked ideas come from? Please don't interrupt. By royal command, the pastry chefs have... What's a half-baked idea? Azaz gives up the idea of speaking as a cart is wheeled in and the guests help themselves. Humbug, they're very tasty, but they don't always agree with you. Here's a good idea. Humbug hands one to Milo. Milo, and he reads, the earth is flat. Spelling bee. People swallowed that one for years. Pick, picks one up and reads it. The moon is made of green cheese? Now there's a half-baked idea. Everyone chooses one and eats. They include, it never rains but pours. Night air is bad air. Everything happens for the best. And coffee stunts your growth. Azaz, and now for a few closing words. Attention, let me have your attention. Everyone leaps up and exits, exits except for Milo, Talk, and the Humbug. Loyal subjects and friends, once again on this gala occasion we have Milo. Excuse me, but everyone left. Azaz, sadly, I was hoping no one would notice. It happens every time. Humbug, they're gone to dinner and as soon as I finish this last bite, I shall join them. Milo, that's ridiculous. How can they eat dinner right after a banquet? Azaz, scandalous. We shall put a stop to it at once. From now on, by royal command, everyone must eat dinner before the banquet. Milo, well, that's just as bad. Humbug, 
or just as good, things which are equally bad are also equally good, try to look on the bright side of things. Milo, I don't know which side of anything to look at. Everything is just so confusing and all your words only make things worse. Azaz, true, how true? There must be something we can do about it. Humbug, pass a law? Azaz, we have almost as many laws as words. Humbug, offer a reward. Azaz shakes his head, makes it look madder at each suggestion. Then for help? Drive a bargain? Pull the switch? Lower the boom? Toe the line? As his ass continues to scowl, the humbug loses confidence and finally gives up. Milo, maybe you should let rhyme and reason return. As ass, how nice that would be. Even if they were a bother at times, things always went so well when they were here, but I'm afraid it can't be done. Humbug, certainly not, it can't be done. Milo, why not? Humbug, now siding with Milo. Why not indeed? Azaz, much too difficult. Humbug, of course much too difficult. Milo, you could if you want, really wanted to. Humbug, by all means, if you really wanted to, you could. Azaz to Humbug, how? Milo, also to Humbug, yeah, how? Humbug, why... Uh, it's a simple task for a brave boy with a stout heart, steadfast dog, and a serviceable small automobile. Azaz, go on. Humbug, well, all that he would have to do is cross the dangerous unknown countryside between here and Digitopolis. Digitopolis where he would have to persuade the math magician to release the princesses, which we know would be impossible because the math magician will never agree with his ass about anything. Once achieving that, it's a simple matter of entering the mountains of ignorance from where no one has ever returned alive. An effortless climb up a 2,000 foot stairway without railings, in a high wind, at night, to the castle in the air. After a pleasant chat with the princesses, all that remains is a leisurely ride back through those chaotic crags where the frightening fiends have sworn to tear any intruder limb from limb and devour him down to his belt buckle. And finally, after doing that, a triumphal parade, if, of course, there is anything left to per parade, followed by hot chocolate and cookies for everyone. I, have, I never realized it would be so simple. It sounds dangerous to me. And just who is supposed to make that journey? A very good question. But there is one far more serious problem. Milo, what's that? I'm afraid I can't tell you until you return. But wait a minute, I didn't. Dictionopolis will always be grateful to you, my boy, and your dog. Now, just one moment, sir. You will face many dangers on your journey, but fear not, for I can give you something for your protection. Azaz gives Milo a box. In this box are the letters of the alphabet. With them, you can form all the words you will ever need to help you overcome the obstacles that may stand in your path. All you must do is use them well and in the right places. Milo, miserably, thanks a lot. Azaz, you will need a guide, of course, and since he knows the obstacles so well, the humbug has cheerfully volunteered to accompany you. Humbug, now stay here! Azaz, you will find him dependable, brave, 
resourceful, and loyal. Humbug, faltered, oh, your majesty. Milo, I'm sure he'll be a great help. They approach the car. Talk, I hope so. It looks like we're going to need it. The lights darken and the king fades from view. Azaz, good luck. Drive carefully. The three get into the car and begin to move. Suddenly, a thunderously loud noise is heard. They slow down the car. What was that? It came from ahead. Humbug, it's something terrible. I just know it. Oh no, something dreadful is going to happen to us. I can feel it in my bones. The noise is repeated. They look at each other fearfully and the lights fade. Okay, so that's the rest of our play. What I need you to do now is the comprehension check. So one through five, complete those in your notebook. And then I want you to journal. So the journal question today is, what might happen if a fictional character were to come into the real world? So again, what might happen if a fictional character were to come into the real world? Now, yesterday I posted three or four uh, word documents about sentence starters and transition words. Now, I want you to start using those words as we write because all of the writing is leading us towards the final exam. So, write your journal. I want two paragraphs and the comprehension check. Now, put that in your notebook. The comprehension check, you can either put them in the book or you can put them in your notebook. I will be checking once we get back to school. I also will be checking the journals once we get back to school. Now, if you have any questions for me, in Class Era, I have created discussion boards. Any questions, I want you to put them on the discussion board so that everybody can see them and I can answer everybody in case other girls have the same question as you do. So with that being said, one last time, your journal. What might happen if a fictional character were to come into the real world. Now, what does that sound like? Does that sound like a compare and contrast? No. Does that sound like an argument? No. It is persuasive. So you have to pick maybe pick one person that you would like to come into the real world and then write what would happen if they did. Okay. And all of the system starters are already on class Sarah. So, I will see you tomorrow.